All right, what's going on? I'm back at it with another one. And, um, you know, I just wanted to talk about a situation that happened down in Memphis, in Memphis, Tennessee, where a pastor, um, he was uh, setting up his church, you know, getting ready for Sunday services. And some guys came along, tried to steal a car, another church member's car out of the parking lot. And the, uh, the pastor, you know, attempted to stop him. And he ended up being shot. Um, he survived and uh, now he's shared his story with uh, Fox 13 out there in Memphis but um, you know I think this just kind of shows you that when it comes to the criminal element and just criminals um, they don't they don't care they don't care and and nobody's immune or exempt you know from running across these individuals who do this type of stuff so Let's go ahead and check it out, and then um, you know, I'm gonna come back with my thoughts about the uh, the situation. I don't. I cannot explain how it happened. Uh, all I know once I was struck. Only on Fox 13 for the first time we're hearing tonight from the pastor shot outside of his Memphis church last month. Reverend Clemmy Livingston Jr. was shot in the face during a carjacking just minutes before his morning service February the 25th. Now home from the hospital, he says he has a new calling. Tonight, the pastor is sharing his story only with Fox 13's Sierra Jordan. Pastor Livingston has a long road to recovery after being shot here outside his church. Now I sat down with the pastor and his wife about the moments leading up to the shooting and his condition now. They both agree this is a life changing experience and they're on a mission to stop youth violence right here in the community. I don't, I cannot explain how it happened. Uh, all I knew once I was struck. It was a traumatic and unexpected experience for this South Memphis pastor two weeks ago. Pastor Clemming Livingston was shot in the face during a carjacking outside his new Zion Field Baptist Church. While I was waiting for the paramedics, all I could see. I kept asking myself, right on, well, I'm going to be dead in a few minutes because I was losing blood at a record rate and everything, but I held on to my belief. Livingston says his life could have ended, but he's grateful to be alive today. But it will be a long road to recovery as he deals with losing part of his jaw, which makes it hard to eat. I said, I want us to be as happy as we were. And so I, you know, yeah, I can kind of make the rice go just a little bit more down. And yesterday it was greens and dressing. Before that it was cabbage, but it was all for eating. I asked him, how was it? He said, it tastes just like it's supposed to taste. After living in Memphis for more than 60 years, Pastor Livingston says the senseless gun violence needs to end. He says his plans are to bring church leaders, city officials, and the community together to create more educational resources, jobs, and extracurricular activities for youth. Give them something to do. Don't steal my car, buy your car. And everything. So many, so many of these householders at home, they don't have a father or nothing in the home. No. So we have to look at all this. Pastor Livingston said he has two more surgeries until he has a full recovery. Now I did reach out to Memphis police about an update on this investigation. They say they have no suspects in custody, but the investigation continues. Now, if you have any information on the shooter, please reach out to Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. In South Memphis, Sierra Jordan. All right, man. Yeah, so... You know, that's it's just I don't know. It don't it don't make any sense. Um, but I, I don't think any amount of resources or programs are, are going to put an end to this type of stuff um, that we've seen happening, you know, in these cities, not only in Memphis, but in cities across the country, like in Houston, Atlanta, uh, Chicago, uh, Philadelphia, New York, L.A., um, and even right here in Las Vegas. Um and I say that because it's been done before and, and nothing's changed. Um, and, and it just seems like as the years go on and on, it, it's getting worse. Um, you, you may be able to help, you know, those who are 
sincere about changing their ways and changing their lives. You may get some, um, but what about the rest that just simply don't care? I mean, what do you do with those and how do you, um, how do you kind of, you know, keep those who want help away from those who don't? Um, I mean, I know you got to start somewhere, but I would say maybe that the mindset has to change first and not just the mindset of the children, but also the mindsets of the parents, because, um, as the old saying goes, it all starts at home. You know, it all starts uh, there and it, it all starts, you know, in, inside the household and what's being taught and, and what, you know, the children are being allowed to do. And in, in some cases, some of these parents, they, they're just as bad, if not worse than the children uh, that they raise. So I said, uh, that's why I said that it, it, I think it starts with the mindsets. Um, the mindset has to change and then the environments have to change. Because, you know, we're talking about generations upon generations where those children eventually will become adults and they will end up having children. And the cycle is just kind of continues to where um, you get to the point where these generations of families are living in the same jacked up environments with the same jacked up mindsets passed down to them. And it's just a never ending cycle. And it just goes on and on until maybe somebody wakes up, one of them wakes up and decides enough's enough. I'm going to break this cycle. Um, but until then, until we can come up with a process to change people's mindsets, then nothing will change. You know, pe people have been screaming about stopping the violence um, ever since I was a kid growing up in the eighties and the nineties. Um, but what happened to Mr. Livingston? I mean, that, that should never have happened. And now the people who did this, they need to turn themselves in. And and if their conscience, you know, is not weighing on them to the point where, you know, it's, it's bothering them that they'll turn their self, themselves in, then I think it's left up to those who live in the area to step up and say something if they know something. Because, I mean, today it's the pastor. Tomorrow it, it could be you. You never know. You could be in that situation. And if somebody's out there hiding these dudes, hiding them out in their homes or somewhere. They better think about what they're doing and how they're going to mess up their lives in the process. Don't get, don't, don't get caught up and don't crash out because of these fools, because of their stupid decision. Um, but, you know, again, Pastor Livingston, he survived um, because in a lot of these situations, it, it has gone the other way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully he can recover from this and have a successful recovery. Uh, from this senseless situation and just move forward with his life the best way he can. Because I mean, the people who did this, they don't even care how they just made this man's life harder with all the medical bills and the, the physical and the mental issues that he now has to face and overcome. So um, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's, I just hate seeing this, you know, when people that don't even have, they, they, they not even out there doing nothing and they get caught up in stuff like this. So um, yeah, I mean, take care, stay safe, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.